All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the first ever episode of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. Everybody, this is Alex. Hi, everybody. And I'm Jim. Uh, Hi, everybody. Hi, every, everyone. Someone. Every, Hi, someone. Hi, someone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, now, I like Billy Joel. I'm under the impression my friend Alex likes Billy Joel. Is that true? I love Billy Joel. I have every album um, in MP3 form. Is that a thing still? It is, sure. Um, I have the CDs. Um, yeah, I got on it early on and just collected the hell out of it. Uh, and I enjoy every minute of it. And, and do you still uh, go on a binge? Will you still binge? Yeah. Well, you only binge, I think, at this point. Yeah, uh, you know, and I live in New York, so I hear it around. There's like four or five songs that you hear, like coming out of a pizza shop, or just like at Macy's or whatever. There's a small right. selection, and then you'll be like, "Oh yeah," and I'm like, "Oh, I'll go home and listen to that album," and then like three others. Do and then you? You're, oh, I'm full. <laughs> Take a break. <laughs> Do you have his heavy metal album, or whatever uh, it was? Oh, uh, Attila. Yeah. Yeah. Hour of the Wolf. Yeah. I think it's called. <laughs> um, yeah. It's hilarious and fantastic. Yeah. That, that feels like, I'm just going to say, not a good fit. Not a good fit. <laughs> it was a big swing. Yeah. But um, that's his first album, right? Because that predates everything else, doesn't it? Or does Turn He's also in a band called The Hassles which might have been before Attila. I think that was like a high school talent show project. I don't really know. I've never found any recorded version of the hassles. It's only on like the Wikipedia entry. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it's funny to, I was, I said before we started recording and when we said a bunch of stuff, but one of the things about Billy Joel that I find kind of funny is I'll forget about Billy Joel because uh, the lion's share of, of his work is is done. You know, like he'll he's touring and he may put out a, a new album or he may not because he seems like he don't want to. Uh, it doesn't seem like he wants to. But so there's this big catalog, but it's all in the past. So I'll forget about him. And then something will happen. And I'll go, oh, yeah, I really like this. Yeah. Um, he, I, for me, he sort of famously, after his last studio album, was like, I don't feel like I'm good at this anymore, and I'm going to stop doing it. It was like, I can't write pop songs anymore. Yeah. And he just didn't. And I was like, I have to respect that. I'm like, yeah, I, I got it out. It, would that, was that River of Dreams? I think that was the last one, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I've even come around to River of Dreams as a song. It's... It's a little on the silly side because he's doing kind of a, I guess it's something like if Billy Joel did gospel, that's what that song is, right? I always think like, oh, he got drunk and listened to Graceland. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to try something like that. <laughs> that's funny. And he was like, yeah, close enough. I like, one thing I will say about that, that ain't even the song we're talking about. The one thing that suddenly struck me that I like about River of Dreams is that it sounds a little gospely, but it, uh, at one point he goes in the song, he says, I'm not much of a spiritual man. So it's a gospel song where he's like, I'm not sure there's a God. And I like that a lot. Yeah. As an expression of something that maybe doesn't get said enough, which is that, you know, uh, the atheist and the agnostic periodically get a yearning and they think about stuff. Yeah, and it's like halfway through the song, it's like, yeah, maybe this isn't for me. Yeah. Yeah, and I also think it's a little bit of a, that Long Island thing of like wanting to be in an argument. <laughs> oh, a gospel song? I'm not a spiritual man. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> like you're arguing with your own arrangement. You started it, Billy Joel. <laughs> yeah. You brought us all here. So uh, I want to start uh, the song. I, I picked the song this week and some weeks Alex will pick the song and some weeks we'll forget to do it. But um, you can guarantee that'll happen now. And then. <laughs> Very likely uh, true. But the song that uh, made me want to do this was I was listening to just a classic, My Life. Uh, a very simple pop song that probably came out 
late seventies, early eighties, maybe. What do you think? What do you think? Album was that on? Second uh, Street. Yes. Seventy-eight, I think. Okay, so this is an early hit. Yeah. Yeah. This is and, like in the early part of <laughs> like when he was really raw, rolling. So um, I'll I'll. I'm going to just do a quick analysis of the first part of it, hand it off to Alex, and that'll end in me, that part will end in me telling you why I found the song so interesting. Oh, and good. Pass it on to you. So the first line of the song is, got a call from an old friend. We used to be real close. Right. It dawned on me what a, for a jumpy song, how melancholy that is to talk about <laughs> a friend who meant something to you, but you're immediately acknowledging we used to be real close. Something went down. Yeah, and they're still uh, friends, I think. Still friends, but like, we don't need to hang out. Yeah, and there's some stuff we probably could talk about, but I'm done talking about that with you because <laughs> it's going yeah. nowhere. Almost so, certainly like Billy's fault. Absolutely. I think a <laughs> lot of- For the character uh, song yeah. in the song. And in this song, I'm pretty sure the character is Billy, because it feels it feels as, it feels pretty personal. This song, so right. I got a call from an old friend we used to be real close. Said he couldn't go on the American way. Uh, closed his shop, sold a house. Which I find that he sold a house. A <laughs> house. He sold a house. Hopefully, it was his house. I hope so, uh, or maybe like a realtor. Or a realtor. <laughs> Uh, got a ticket to the West Coast. Now he gives him a stand-up routine in LA. To me, the other thing about this that dawned on me as being quite lovely is this is objectively a guy from New York, even if you didn't know he was from New York. Yeah. Uh, got a call from an old friend who used to be real co close, said he couldn't go on the American way. And then he defines what the American way is. He closed his shop, sold his house, being a guy who runs a shop feels like a New York or Chicago. That feels like if you think that's the American way, that's that city. You sell sausages to your neighbors or whatever it is. You do. <laughs> that feels like a big city shop to me. Yeah. Uh, it feels I, even Long Island, I would say. Absolutely. Uh, you don't have a house in New York City. Yeah. You're out in Long Island. You, I'm sorry, I have a cat. And I'm talking about Billy Joel lyrics. Call me ladies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like uh, that's the other thing. I mean, like, you couldn't go on the American way. This guy uh, was a homeowner with a thriving business. Yeah. And thought, oh, this is a good time to try stand up. Yeah, which, by the way, is dumb, even if you're good at it. <laughs> yes, and it's never a good idea for anyone, even the I people it's out for. I, I do stand up and sometimes I'll be talking to somebody who's very funny and it occurred to me that they're very funny and many times funnier than me, which is a, not a giant bar, but regardless. And they'll say, I was thinking of doing stand up and I'd go, why don't I say? The only <laughs> people who should do stand up are people who have to do stand up. Right. That's the only people who should do it. And this guy who had a shop and a house, he clearly had to. No, you have to be. It's stand up isn't a thing you should do if it's just like, well, I could do stand up, but I, I also like typing. Do typing. <laughs> do typing. It's just going to pay you so much better. I don't care how so you true. do. It. Yeah, he's in so many different fields. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, got a ticket to the West Coast. Now he gives them a stand up routine in LA. Here's what dawned on me that made me go, damn, that's kind of awesome. That character in that verse mm -hmm. does not make a second appearance in the song. We're done yeah. with him. He is huh. the impetus for our main character to make his choice. Because our main character gets this call from a buddy and his buddy says, you know what, to hell with all this nonsense. And after he hangs up, he thinks, why am I doing this? Whatever it is he's doing. <laughs> and why am I tolerating this person who calls me? We'll talk about the rest of the song in a minute. Why am yeah, I tolerating yeah. that? Why don't I do what I want to do? 
my buddy, who we never hear from again. We don't know if he was good at stand-up. He might have OD'd on something. We don't know. We just know he went to L.A. to do stand-up. And well, he, we know he got a ticket to the West Coast. Yes. So he might was, still be at the airport <laughs> trying to clarify where he wants to go. Oh, yeah, that's true. He just <laughs> landed somewhere on the coast. <laughs> I'd like a ticket to the West Coast, please. <laughs> um, I also love that that character, whoever he is, first of all, starting to understand why they don't talk so much anymore. He's the kind of guy who likes, like, and fuck the house and the shop, I'm, I'm leaving. He's probably like very erratic in a lot of his behavior. Right. And probably hard to hang out with. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing is, uh, you live in New York already. If you want to do stand up, oh, yeah. don't go to, <laughs> you're going, you do stand up in New York until people know who you are, and then you go to LA and get a pilot. Yeah, that's so, interesting. Yeah. I'm just on that character a little bit. I didn't even notice until you mentioned it that he leaves the song completely. You know what? And that tells you, I bet you that guy has done stand up in New York and he sucks. Right. And that's why he went what? To they don't get me here. I'm going to yeah. go to LA. Because I know people who have done both. It's, it's the same thing, by the way. If you're in LA and you're like, I'm going to go to New York and do stand up, like, all right, well, cool. It'll be so fun for you to try to find an apartment you can afford. Good luck. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and either direction you go, it doesn't really make sense. Right. You are in LA. Can you, do you have a car? Can you even drive? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever yeah. driven before? I left Wyoming to do stand up in LA. I get that. Great. Left New York, left LA, left Boston. Cool, because you're like, I like stand up and I'm not racist. <laughs> right. So, yeah. You're like, I don't really like uh, people using gay slurs constantly. So I'm going to one of the, oh, they still yeah. do it. Shoot. I need to rewrite my whole act, but <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> it out. All right, so what are your others? Any other thoughts about our uh, our first character, the character? Our, our stand-up character. No, I think, uh, yeah, no, I think we summed it up. I think an erratic dude with a dream. Yeah. Um, you know, and, hey, you know, that doesn't lessen his chances of making it. At least that's been my experience. Yeah, true. I mean, what did uh, Tom Hanks has the, talking about acting one time said, he thinks of himself as just the last man standing because he just didn't stop doing it. Yeah. He, uh, then I, you know, I've been asked before, like, how I made it to SNL and all that. And I was like, oh, I just couldn't do anything else. <laughs> couldn't make enough money any other way. So I just kept trying to do that. Yeah. Stay alive in the meantime. Um, and you have to be passionate I, about it. That's all. This song also was the theme song for Bosom Buddies, was it not? It was. Oh, yes. with a sound, yeah you're right with a sound alike singer right Oof. yeah the worst yeah so that song has first of all that song barely has anything to do with itself much less uh that tv show <laughs> yeah it's yeah i'm not sure like thank you for being a friend for uh golden girls at least makes sense that it was originally yeah. a song but i'm like well okay they're all friends and yeah. they're all old. Okay. Yeah. These yeah. guys wanted a cheap apartment. I guess there's no songs about just one <laughs> dressing and drag to get a cheap apartment. <laughs> well, I guess we need to make a band then, because that's our first song. Walk on the Wild Side? What was that about? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It was about BJs, all kinds of good stuff in that song. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, we can't. We can't do other songs. Not yet. No. This, no. this episode is about my life and not my <laughs> life, my life. Song, my life yeah. <laughs> all right so why don't you take us through the beginning of uh after our comic hits the road and stops being a nuisance all right well i have not pulled up the lyrics so i have to remember yeah oh so now we're going into his like inner monologue where he's like i don't need you to worry for me because i'm all right yeah I don't want you to tell me it's time to come home. I don't care what you say anymore. Who's he talking to? Everyone, kind of? So I have a theory, but I want to hear you first. 
I feel well. I think he's like trying to psych himself up to like break up with somebody or quit a job or something. He obviously uh, is lacking in courage, and so he needed all this. He needed the the, the guy to be the catalyst, yeah. and he needs like this self talk to tell somebody off. Yeah. Um, I also think that this those lines work really well as just like the thesis sentence for all his music, <laughs> <laughs> all his lyrics. Everything is like, uh, you know, fuck you. I don't want to do it your way. Uh, I don't want to do the thing that you like. Yeah. I like the thing that I like and leave me alone. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, like every song, it could pretty much be called Leave Me Alone. Which, by the way, is a mediocre song by Michael Jackson. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, I was going to say it's a great song. It was like, no, nah, I'm wrong. That was not one. <laughs> uh, here's, who I, here's who I think he's either psyching himself up to talk to or who he's talking to. I think it's his mom. Oh, I'll bet. And I'll tell yeah. you why I think that. I don't need you to worry for me. You don't say that to a friend of yours who's just a little concerned. Well, you're not mad if your buddy's like, hey, I'm worried about you. And yeah. you're not mad if you're a girl. Well, you might be if you're on the outs. But if you've dealt with your damn Italian mom for a long, long time and suddenly <laughs> it dawns on you, yep. ah, I'd just like to be an adult now. I don't need you to worry for me. I'm all right. I don't need you to tell me it's time to come home. I don't care what you say anymore. <laughs> this is my life. Go yeah. ahead with your own life. Leave me alone. That feels like it's his mom to me. That sounds right. Now, is he Italian? Uh, he should be. I don't know. <laughs> I think he's Jewish. He might be Jewish. Is Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, mom-wise, uh, very similar territory. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and certainly would drive home the worrying aspect. Oh, yeah, true. I always thought he was Italian, but if he's Jewish, that's fair. That's weird. I mean, I think, you know, when you grow up on Long Island, you kind of absorb all those things. Yeah. <laughs> you are Italian and Jewish. Yeah, I mean, the Fonz is... Yeah, and you're a motorcycle guy, even if you don't have a motorcycle. Right. And you're kind of like a weekend boat guy, oh. probably, whether you have a boat or not. Ah, the weekend boat guys are the worst. Oh, yeah. Now, motorcycle guys are pretty bad, too. Motorcycle guys are bad just because of the noise. Yeah, and they're harder to get away from. Yeah, that's true. The, the boat, you just have to go inland a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> they won't bother you. That's true. Were you, were you um, looking up whether he's uh, Jewish or, or, or... No, I was looking at the lyrics again. Um, I was jumping ahead is what I was doing. I oh, shouldn't yeah, no, no worries, yeah. So, <laughs> so what do you think? I think it's his mom, but I think... I had never thought about what you said, though. Maybe this isn't a currently happening, happening conversation. This is him. I like that idea. He's getting ready. To tell it could be, yeah, just stomping around in the hallway, like getting ready to quit a job or break up with a girl or something. Oh. He obviously feels constrained by, or you know, um, it also occurred to me, where is it? Sorry, I'm looking at lyrics again. There's something uh, Catholic churchy about it too, but that's coming later. Okay. I don't know who's telling you you can't sleep with somebody else. Yeah. I love those particular lyrics, by the way. And Billy Joel lyrics are often filled with common aphorisms that for some reason <laughs> I like the way he uses them. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, you know, only the good die young. Very Catholic. Yeah. And, and, it, and, uh, uh, she's always a woman to me, although I love that song. I just do like that song. <laughs> Because because this woman he's talking about is clearly unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> or he is, you know, which seems just as likely. Oh, yeah. For sure, they're a problem couple. For sure, yeah. they've ruined many parties. Yeah, they're, you're not getting the full story, I think, from any of his songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, if you did, every part of every song would include just a little part where he goes, and then I went drinking. <laughs> you can't put that in every song. Which didn't solve anything. 
Yeah. Uh, the same argument, but with a hangover. So, you know, I think your idea that it's happening in his head suddenly occurs to me as makes a lot of narrative sense following the exit of our original character. Because that yeah, guy, the absence of any future characters. Yeah, that guy hits the road and he's like, damn it. And he's like, come on, come on. Come on, sell the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I sell my shop? Oh, I need to open a shop and sell it. <laughs> All right, so what's, the, what, what's after this? What's after this? Um, where were we? We were... Go ahead with your own life. Your own life. Oh, yeah, then it gets into the weird chorusy part. Now there are other voices. Yeah. I never said you had to offer me a second chance. I never said I was a victim of circumstance. I still belong. I, again, it feels churchy. Yeah. What are you belonging to? Uh, don't get me wrong. You can speak your mind, but not on my time. Yeah, that's weird. yeah. That's this weird. thing sounds like the priest came to their house. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. This sounds yeah. Maybe why is the priest here? I have to put up with him an hour a week, <laughs> and I feel guilty all the time. <laughs> now he's at the house. He just told off mom in the first, right? And then mm, mom gets the priest so. in there. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, he used to be such a good boy. He used to remember. <laughs> used to, Don't sell the shop. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, why would you sell the shop? <laughs> like, what? It's Monday. You can't be here. <laughs> you get oh. one day. Yeah, leave me alone. Um, I never said you had to offer me a second chance. And I And now if we hear the other... So if it's still going on in his head, then he's doing that thing every single human being does, which is winning arguments in the car with someone who's not there. Yes. But if they're there, um, somebody's, somebody's drawing a line in the sand and he's like, I don't give a fuck about your line in the sand. They're like, <laughs> look, I'm not mad at you, but you have to, no, I don't have to do anything. <laughs> you, you're under the impression that we're negotiating something. I'm done. Yeah, no. He's fed up, so they're like, look, all of we just come, everything will be fine if you come to church this Sunday. I ain't coming to church this Sunday. I fucking told you. Yeah, I told I you. Like I closed <laughs> the shop. I ain't coming to your damn church. You should close that up. How about that, Padre, he says. <laughs> got a ticket think, oh, to the West Coast. Yeah, I got a ticket to the West Coast. I'm going to stay at my friend's house. Go watch him do stand-up. <laughs> yeah. Hang and around then realize, and then realize he meant an open mic. It's not even a booked show. <laughs> it's real <a> disappointed. <laughs> he flew me out there for a bringer. Yeah, I just spent twenty bucks on two drinks. That was no good. <laughs> um. Well, yeah, I never said you had to offer me a second chance. Never said you were a vic. I was a victim of circumstance. What the hell does he mean there? I can't imagine because he is sounding a lot like a victim <laughs> of so, circumstance. Oh, so is it, you're always blaming us for your life. No, maybe I did, but that's not what this is about. Maybe it's one of those kind of arguments, which I've had with my mom back in the good old days. So <laughs> you're like, uh, yeah. Still having them. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, I still belong is a weird one. Yeah, I still belong. I mean, that I mean, could be a uh, lot. Yeah. You can speak your mind. Like, look, I'm just, I, I'll be at church on Sunday. Just leave me alone the rest of the week. Yes. Yes, or, hey, I'll let you vent. But right now, I got shit to say. So this is me now. Uh, you're mad about whatever, you can tell me later. But yeah. right now, you're fucking listening. <laughs> think yeah. that's it or the, I like I think it feels very much like a first time like the first time was like I'm done listening now I've been listening for X number of years and uh, now we're doing it now we're doing my thing it's very like 16 years old yeah 
um, which doesn't jibe with the first part because you don't have a lot of friends who have or homeowners yeah. and shopkeepers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it is very much like the first time you yelled at your mom. Yeah. And, you know, and she was taken aback and you were like talking, but you also couldn't believe what you were saying. I, I you know that thing where you're yelling at somebody and you're like, oh my God, I'm doing it. I'm yelling at them. Uh, <laughs> what's going to happen? <laughs> I'll just keep going. I remember the first time I laid down the law on a minor thing with my mother. I'll tell you that. And if you want to share one, good. If you don't, understood. <laughs> but uh, it was a Thanksgiving one. Ooh. So mom and dad got divorced, which was fantastic because they should never have been together in the first place, even to the degree that I'll say if I could have prevented their marriage, knowing I wouldn't exist, still worth it. Yeah, um, they were just not a good couple or a good singles. Um, but uh, it was Thanksgiving and my mom was this was in her making an effort years, to be honest, she was trying her best and she wanted me to go have thanksgiving dinner with her and her new boyfriend and her aa buddies wow and i and it and i'd always done thanksgiving with her and i said well i'm gonna have thanksgiving with my girlfriend and my friends that's where i will be having thanksgiving and then she was also you don't want to have thanksgiving with me and i went <laughs> no i don't I, I love you, but I, no, I don't. That sounds unpleasant. Everyone there will be smoking and eating food I don't <laughs> enjoy. Yeah. And conversations. And I laid down the law and didn't allow her to guilt me into it. And uh, I, I get you, Billy Joel. You <laughs> yeah. yeah, you start, you know, just throwing things out. I mean, that one verse is very, you know, it's all the things that you say, and like, these don't make sense, and I'm contradicting myself a lot, but... Uh, I'm like you're grasping around for the thing you're trying to say. Right. Like, I'm not a victim of circumstance. <laughs> I, uh, I still belong. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Uh, you can speak your mind, not on my time. Hey, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That does kind of, you're right. Cause it's the, there's a thing this character wants to say but it's the hardest thing they've ever had to say to this person. Yeah. And it needs to be said, and I think you're right. They're also not entirely sure what it is. They just know there's a thing in their heart or their head that if they could just get it out, they'd feel better. And, uh, and really, the only reason they're doing it is because of their dumb buddy who sold his shop. And <laughs> right. Like, if he can do it, I can. Uh, he gets to do whatever he wants. Yeah. We've all had that feeling. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to be a victim of circumstance anymore, he said. Mm -hmm. All right, so then um, then we get into the, the next set of lyrics, which just have to do with him also being a dirty boy. Um, <laughs> um, what are the next lyrics, right? Uh, is The next lyrics are, they will tell you, right? They will tell you. You can't sleep alone in a strange place. Then they'll tell you you can't sleep with somebody else. What? Yeah. They give you no options. Yeah, well. I also, who, <laughs> who told you you can't sleep alone in a strange place? <laughs> <laughs> That's the other reason I think it's mom. Because who else would say oh, something yeah. weird like that? Yeah, who yeah, refers to, like, That's a strange place. Yeah, like, hey, do you mind if I stay over at Gary's house? I don't know Gary. I don't know his parents. No. Yeah, I don't want you sleeping at a strange place. Yeah, you don't know what they're doing. I, you know, I don't even think that they're Catholic. How do I know their parents are even home? Yeah, yeah, you're trying to, <laughs> yeah. Um, but then, our, what, what's our next? But now, thing? what's interesting is like, who's he talking to now? It's not. Is he still like yammering at himself? But now it sounds like he's done yelling in his brain, and now maybe he's met up with some friends. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, spin it around. Yeah, because this is more of an epiphany. Yeah. Um, like, after you yell at your mom and you stomp out of the house and you go down to, like, in front of the 7-Eleven where your friends are smoking, <laughs> you're like, hey, I just yelled at my mom and I told her all this stuff. And then they're like, yeah, I yelled at my mom last week. And uh, then you start kicking it around. And you're like, yeah, they'll tell you you can't sleep alone in a strange place. And then they'll tell you you can't sleep with somebody else. And I'm like, where the fuck am I supposed to sleep? <laughs> uh, I says 
I says, yeah. By the way, there's definitely at least one guy in that group crowd who goes, I could never yell at my mom. <laughs> yeah. And another guy who's 10 years older than the rest of them. Right. Who, you're like, like, yeah, my mom, I tell her whatever I want. Because I, it's my house now. <laughs> my house, because uh, she can't walk so good. But, <laughs> but either uh, see, they will tell you you can't sleep alone in a strange place. They will tell you you can't sleep with somebody else. Ah. Uh, but either way, it's okay. No, wait. What's the sooner or later <laughs> you sleep in your, your own, own space? Place. Yes. Yeah, you get your own apartment. That's right. Sooner or later, it's your own place. You don't have to live in your mom's house anymore. And then there is the epiphany that we all have when you do get your own apartment. Because I've, I've, I think I've had this feeling where I went, where I finally had a thing, like the first big comedy gig you ever do and you do the big gig. And then when you're done, you're like, oh, I'm still me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. All right. That's, that's upsetting. <laughs> right. A lot of things have changed, but not this. <laughs> either way, it's okay to wake up with yourself, which is either great or more probably just, I guess I, this is, this is one I can't get rid of. Right. Yeah. This is the, I can't yell at this. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, he seems to think it's okay. Yeah. Way, it's okay. You wake up with yourself. And hopefully also Christy Brinkley once in a while. Right. That'd be okay. That would be, okay. be all right. Even now, she's still very pretty. And then a series of younger and younger chefs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, he did it. Yeah. He got out. By the way, so this is also one of the reasons I really like Billy Joel. Sometimes you'll see a guy like David Bowie, right? Right. Well, you rarely will you see a guy like David Bowie unless you see David Bowie. And he has otherworldly good looks. He's bizarre looking and beautiful. He looks like a specimen of a specimen of what mankind could be. And I do not look like that. Or you'll get a guy like Steven Tyler, who right. as ugly as the day is long to such a degree that he crosses over into exotic, gorgeous women love him. Right. Whereas Billy Joel looks like a guy it could be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somebody, I have a friend who um, saw Billy Joel in the city and was like, he was standing outside an apartment building with a ring of keys on his waist. And she was like, I thought it was somebody's super. <laughs> it so easily could have been. Uh, and yeah, it's true. I mean, and he is like that. He's, you know, he doesn't behave in any way that would dissuade you from the idea that he might be the super. Right. Um, the first time I saw him in concert, uh, a long time ago in Tucson, he came out, sat at the piano, and he leaned into the microphone and burped as loud as he could. And then he said, uh, I had a bunch of radishes backstage. <laughs> and then he started playing <laughs> music, beautiful music on the piano. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, yeah, we all know that guy. That's so great. Uh, great. My, my friend Walker, did you ever meet my friend Walker? I know Walker. You would, you would like my friend Walker. He's actually grew up in Long Island. Oh, great. And, uh, he, of course, is a big Billy Joel fan by blood. I think you just are if you're from Long Island. You're a big Billy Joel fan. And uh, he just, he said he loves the music, but he also said, and, you know, he was just like, and this is the way he described it. He goes, he was just like any number of knuckleheads in my neighborhood. And he uses the word knucklehead, which I feel is very Long Island. Yeah. And he, he goes, who just weren't smart because he was smart but not you know i don't mean he wasn't smart which i like that he said that too <laughs> you know, i just mean that he wasn't actually really educated and because of that he made a bunch of money lost it made a bunch of money lost it made a bunch of money lost it, it a very his, long island story yeah and is in the process of making it back now and probably 
he did have a residency for a while. I don't think that's going on now. It is not going on now. Yeah. Uh, but it'll be back. Yeah. As soon as they can. Yeah, I've seen him five or six times there at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, that is a thing I have to do. Yeah. And the thing that always strikes me <laughs> when I go there is uh, I'll stand and I'll look around at the audience and I'll be like, 800 dudes who look exactly like Billy Joel. <laughs> They're just like little round potato men <laughs> with like leather jackets and they know every word. And yeah. uh, it's fantastic. It's like going to like uh, Comic-Con or you see like 80 Batmans. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah, good. There shouldn't be just one Batman. Yeah. Yeah. Billy Joel's just like the avatar for all these Long Island guys who are like trying to phrase their thoughts, bucking it up a little bit, but mostly getting it out. And yeah, they're they're not dumb, but they're not smart smart. Yeah. <laughs> and like, good hearted. Oh, keep it together. Yeah. And Let me good finish. Hearted, right? The what? They're good hearted. Yeah. I mean, you know. It's a population of people, so there's some percentage that are garbage, and they're yeah. mostly great. Yeah. Um, what's tricky is uh, they all sound mean <laughs> until you talk to them for 10 minutes, and you're like, oh, that's just the accent. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know who told me this first, the difference between L.A. It might have been Walker. The difference between L.A. and uh, Long Island uh, would be that in, in LA, if you tell somebody, hey, I'm lost, they'll be like, oh man, I'm sorry. Well, listen, and then they'll tell you the wrong place to go. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> in Long Island, if you, you're lost and they go, ah, you idiot, well, listen, and they'll help you. <laughs> yeah, and they'll take it the right way. Yeah. And at the yeah. end of it, you realize, ah, I'm an okay guy, and he's right. I kind of am an idiot. So I kind of yeah. shouldn't have gotten lost the way I got lost. Well, and they'll say stuff, you idiot, the streets are a grid. Uh, you get lost. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Uh, yeah, you have to come to one of those shows. Oh, God, yes. There's a vaccine. I like, I like me, uh, I, yeah, I like me some Billy Joel. The other one I've seen, you probably, this, we may not cross paths musically. You'll tell me if you like this group. I've seen Bare, Lake, Bare Naked Ladies like 12 times. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I like what I've heard, but I have not pursued their music. Like, yeah, my buddy. Definitely enjoyable. Yeah, their, their sad songs are ridiculously sad, where they're like really good, like uh, Lying in Bed, just like Brian Wilson did. It's a great oh, wow. Yeah, there's a song about called Brian Wilson, and it's just about being in a <laughs> haze. And then they'll do this weird song called You Can Be My Yoko Ono. And part of the lyrics are, it kind of makes me mad when people blame Yoko Ono. I'm like, oh, that's nice. Yeah, and accurate. Yeah, because yeah, she's just a lady who was dating a guy. What are you people yeah. on about? That band was coming apart at the seams anyway. Yeah. Um, I also respect any band that chooses their name based on like how how many people will accidentally come see them at a bar because of the name. Right. <laughs> like, oh, look, Bare Naked Ladies, we should go in here. Oh, a band. Yeah. yeah, three or four <laughs> affable guys from Canada. Damn it. All right. <laughs> they also do this thing that I enjoy at a concert where uh, they're – playing their music and you realize they're good at the musician part right and i rarely see this by the way sometimes you'll be at a concert and the guitarist will switch guitars and he'll play a different guitar and most of the time i'm like why did you even bother switching guitars that doesn't sound different why, why, why did we switch right. guitars i'll think but the bare naked ladies they'll switch and i'm like oh he's got a mandolin now and they do all kinds of weird things like that or it's a different electric guitar, but it made a goddamn difference. Yeah. Because well, the great thing when I, when you see Billy Joel is he because it's a residency. Yeah. He can pretty much do whatever he wants. He'll just be like, uh, "Hey, everybody, uh, Steve Winwood." So like, Steve Winwood will come out and play one of his songs. Oh. And we're like, "All right, bye, Steve." <laughs> hey, Chick Corea is here. 
to do a couple, and then he'll just like, I'll play a Beatles song now, because awesome. I like those songs. And you're like, okay. Yeah. It's just whatever, it's, you know, it's like, I imagine what it would be like being at his house. Yeah, at, one, at, a, at a really good party. And he often, uh, the last few times I've seen him, he won't exactly take requests, but he'll say, here's two songs. Which one do you want to hear? Oh, that's fun. Yeah. He'll be like, oh, Summer Highland Falls or Pressure? And then he'll do this. And I'm like, all right, fuck it, Summer Highland Falls. And he'll play that. Uh, and just all night long. And they're long thought, concerts, aren't they? And my other favorite, I'll tell you one more thing that made me laugh. Uh, similar to the radishes thing I saw him in Chicago at Wrigley Field probably five years ago and it was you know at night and uh, all the lights on stage are on and there's no lighting in the audience really so every moth in Illinois went to the stage <laughs> so he came out with a huge yellow fly swatter like not even a good one like the one a grandpa would have because it was cheaper. <laughs> right. And they're like, I didn't get the good one. This works. Big yellow fly. And he just sat at the piano doing his speech and swatting moths away from his face while he's talking. <laughs> and he, he started with, uh, thanks for coming out tonight. I don't know what everybody's doing here. I don't have any new ones. Uh, <laughs> you know all these songs. Swat, swat, and then he put the fly swatter on top and started playing a song. And it's always shocking how beautiful the piano music is. Yeah. Like, hey, the super is fucking with the piano. Oh, wow, he's really good. <laughs> he should stop. Being a, he should uh, stop being a super. Yeah, that is the other thing. He's a damn good player. It's so nice to hear. And he does not have the hands for it. Yeah, he. Fucking practice, man. He did the thing yeah. you're supposed to do a ridiculous amount of time. Because he was passionate and not that good looking, he probably had extra time up until he got good at it. Yep. I think there were a bunch of ladies going, all right, that guy. I Didn't he try boxing? Isn't that part of the story? Yes. I think he tried boxing. He got his nose broken and was like, this is not good. <laughs> and I think it was, you know, everything was about trying to impress ladies. Yeah which it feels like a lot of Long Island culture is about. Yeah. Your motorcycles and your boats and your leather jackets and there's a lot of competition. Yeah. And so it's, yeah, so it's boxing. It's like, fuck it, I'll play the piano. Nobody's doing that. And that's such a misguided thing too, by the way, to think that motorcycles and ladies like motorcycles. No, come on. Leather. <laughs> I mean, yes, there is a certain contingent of women who will, but... <laughs> contingent <laughs> there's a there's a female fan base for every activity except maybe what we're doing right now <laughs> might be the only thing <laughs> uh yeah i want to meet the lady who's into this yeah oh, <laughs> oh billy joel lyrics you say and you're not you're not singing them you're talking about them oh I... and only for the first half <laughs> Ooh, does this run out of steam? Huh? <laughs> hey, look. I mean, it's not our fault. It gets very repetitive. That's a thing, man. In the back end, which is, you know, the whole song is a mantra anyway. So you do have to keep repeating it to yourself. It's my life. This is my life. You got to leave me alone. So, I mean, songs do that anyway. I get that. Well, uh, but it does kind of fit what we're saying it's about for sure. Yes. Yeah, it would be great if he did a longer version where that comic guy comes back. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think if we wrote lyrics for him? I already know the answer. I don't think he would record them for us. <laughs> we should try, though. We feel like he's not chill about that kind of thing. Have people done it? I don't know. But he's never, he's almost never on talk shows or anything. Have you very ever, rarely. do you watch Adult Swim at all? Uh, very rarely. So there was this program on Adult Swim called The Greatest Television Event in History. And, <laughs> okay. And right. what they, 
Yeah. And the premise of it is, and they got the guy who, uh, the survivor who hosts Survivor, Jeff Probst, is that his name? Uh huh. Yep. And he hosts the thing and he goes, Welcome to the greatest event in television history. And he goes, We're going to do a shot for shot remake of the opening credits of Bosom Buddies. And that is the greatest event. In, and then they do a behind the scenes documentary of doing the shot for shot remake of the credits. And they had Paul Rudd and Adam Scott from uh, Community were doing the roles of Kip and Henry. Right. And at one point, they're like, and we got Billy Joel to re-record the song. <laughs> a lot of people don't know this as it was a sound alike. And they interview and Billy Joel's in it, and he goes, "You know, it's it's one of the blemishes on my career is that they went with that sound alike, and I've always wanted to be." And he's playing the song, and um, uh, uh, they they say to him, "They go, no, no, can you sound a little? You got to sound a little more like the sound alike." <laughs> oh God! <laughs> and then they insist that he got the lyrics wrong. Um, I right. uh, got a call from an old friend who used to be real close. Said he couldn't go on the American way. Uh, closed the shop, sold a house. We got a ticket to the West Coast. Now he gives them a stand-up routine in L.A. And then Adam Scott goes, no, no, no. And now he's eating a tartine in L.A. And he goes, what's a tartine? He goes, it's this little sandwich. <laughs> and they make Billy Joel sing that. And he does it. Very actively and plays along, which I don't know if he does that very often, but it's kind of fun to see. That's fantastic. Highly recommend you watch it. Um, they've made four of them, greatest events in television history. Yeah. And at the beginning of each new one, they go, I know we told you last year was the greatest <laughs> event in television history. That yeah. was bullshit. <laughs> and then they, yeah. and then one of them is heart to heart. They re record the opening. Oh, so it's always re-recording the opening credits. Yeah. And they always talk about the big budget that they did. <laughs> All uh, right. What? Did, so, go ahead. Did you happen to see uh, on our little show, the Seth Meyers show starring NBC, uh, <laughs> I think that's what it's called, we did a shot, shot for shot remake of the opening of the Rockford Files. I, when, did, when was this? For absolutely no reason. But when? Two or three years ago. Okay. It's out there, I think, somewhere on the interwebs um, for your viewing pleasure. Did you get to be in it? I did not. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Which is fine. Yeah. Uh, but you're occasionally on camera, right? Yeah, pretty occasionally. That's every three, four, five months. Okay. You get to do a bit on the camera. You get to do a little bit. And you get a little extra coin when you do that, right? Yeah, yeah. That's part of the deal. Because Seth seems like Seth seems like a delightful man, by the way. He's a delightful man. But, you know, it's union rules. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's well, why you get the extra dough. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah, uh, he's the nicest boy. Yeah, he just seems very, very pleasant. And, uh, and, uh, and there's nothing wrong with the current weekend update, but I really like Seth's. I yeah, we really did. I I think the two dudes doing it now are great, but yeah, they're great. I just really like Seth's version. But then yeah. I'm like, well, but then I can see Seth's version. I'll just watch his. Show. <laughs> True enough. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and it's great. Hi, hi, Lottie. Um, I think it's great that every pairing, um, makes it into a whole different thing entirely, and no one is pretending it's the news anymore. <laughs> like they're yeah. barely. Hanging on to the premise. Yeah. They, they've they really gone whole hog on there's at least going to be two characters now. Yeah. And uh, though anytime, I don't think she's on the show anymore, but then anytime it was Vanessa Bayer, I was like, oh, I'm happy today. Yeah. Because I, I love her. She's a, just a, a unbelievable gem. That weather girl thing of hers is so stupid and beautiful. <laughs> a beautiful thing. Oh, uh, now, um, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention to fans of our uh, Analyzing Billy Joel podcast show that you can, <laughs> uh, that you can actually purchase Billy Joel music nowhere on our site, but I'm just telling you, you can. No, no, no. 
Yeah, like not yeah, no. all, but you get know, to find what you can. Yeah, you could actually go listen to the song. Uh, what you'll notice is there's not going to be a theme song to the show because uh, I can't afford that. Who needs it? Yeah, it's music heavy already. Exactly. And, uh, I don't need Billy Joel suing me. <laughs> no. One of Billy Joel's like uh, touring musicians, by the way, is on Twitter, and I follow him, and he just tells. Well, not right now, but he told he would just tell fun stories about being on tour with Billy Joel, and he and he just really likes him, and that to me says a lot about okay. Billy Joel, because this guy's just some studio musician who's now touring, and he's like, it's so fun. Not <laughs> he won't talk to me. It's he's it's super right. fun. Yeah, it's super fun. Yeah, I I it's not like when people would tour with um, uh, Johnny B. Good. Um, what was his name? Uh, Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry. Right. Yeah. Chuck Berry was mean. Every yeah. story I've ever heard was he was mean to John Lennon for crap's sake. <laughs> no. Yeah. Not the, no Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess <laughs> I guess he probably had the right to be mean because he probably took a lot of crap. I can't uh, imagine. When he became famous and how America is great. But, uh, <laughs> All right. So now do me a favor. You ready? Yeah. I'm ready, I think. What's going to be the next song? Oh, man. Good question that I had not thought about even a little bit. Awesome. Let me think of what song is kooky. Well, it should be a hit. I don't uh, want to go. We can't go to like crazy B-sides, right? Not yet. Or we, we no. can if you want. Uh, you know what? You pick the damn song. That's what I, I don't mean. want. I don't want that. <laughs> Let's be nice to the people. I'm gonna look because uh, I'm drawing blanks. I mean, I obviously know some songs, but what's the one I really want? Oh, you know what was a weird album? It's the Bridge. Remember that? Yeah. Let's do Big Man on Mulberry Street. Oh, okay. Which was uh, featured in uh, an episode of Moonlighting. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, they did a little dance to it. And then yelled at each other when the cameras were off. Legend has it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a funny show. Moonlighting. I always, it's always just heartbreaking when I was a kid just to find out that people didn't like each other. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. it's like... Now you don't hear that so much anymore. Everyone had a great time together. The new cast, the progressively, the casts of SNL are better friends than they ever used to be. True, because it it used to be what you hear in the books is pitted against each other. Yeah, cutthroat. Yeah, because that's good for comedy, I guess. Yeah, but I think it used to be cocaine, and now it's uh, salads. <laughs> Everyone is having salads all the time, so it's it, you know, I think that helps. Yeah, I hope they're <laughs> having salads, but at parties that go just as late, it's like I was up to four in the morning having salad, <laughs> and then we went over to this guy's house, and I tell you, we had more salad till six. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of accurate. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, it's Seth always says they. they or doing cocaine hours without the cocaine, <laughs> it's, which is absurd. It's like we could all be at home. That was one of the promises when we started this show. It was like, we're all leaving at 7.30. <laughs> we're not staying here late and having like midnight meetings. It's like, no, have families and lives. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, and if you're still mad in the morning, we can talk about it then. <laughs> but otherwise, there's no reason to hang around here. There's a good chance you won't be mad either because you'll have gotten eight hours of sleep. Yeah, you won't remember what happened. It'll, yeah, you're all fucked up on salads. <laughs> you are all twisted on salads, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, how do we end every episode? Oh, well, that's a good question. <laughs> um, do we have a trivia question? Uh, nobody. Yeah. Um, well, you could ask a trivia question and also answer it. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that. Um, 
Do you know the name of the Long Island town where Billy Joel was born? It's Hicksville. <laughs> See? And, and, and then you go, and I get a prize. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been Asked and Answered. <laughs> I'm not against that as an ending for, because, uh, you know, who, who the fuck cares? But that's pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I All said right. it before we started, and I just got to say, your hair looks great. Oh, thank you. Hair that way. Um, I appreciate that. Your hair also looks very good. Thank you. Yeah. I, uh, it's getting very Martin Mall. Yes. Oh, do you remember the Martin Mall story related to me? <laughs> I don't think I do. Oh, wait, maybe I do. Was it Fish Karma? I think it might have been Fish Karma, say, being comedy. Mm hmm. Thing he said. So <laughs> when, I, when I started to do stand up, I was a very skinny young man. And I, I was very skinny, as uh, as people often are when they're young and their bodies work. Uh, <laughs> and I did stand up, and I had this mustache—not this mustache. I had a mustache. It was very bushy. And uh, this comic, uh, I was I was opening there, was, and this is the old three ring circus thing. It was an opener, a feature, and a headliner. And I did my little opening act and some people enjoyed it. Mostly they didn't. Uh, I was new to comedy. There's the feature. <laughs> feature was fine. Headliner got up and did their little act. And the headliner at one point said, hey, give it up for your host, Jim. Doesn't he look like Martin Mull with AIDS? And <laughs> everybody laughed because it was Tucson. I think that, <laughs> was, I think that would still work in Tucson. Um, for sure. For sure. In uh, nobody would know who Martin Mull is. Yeah, that's true. They just like <laughs> the second part. And definitely it would work in Phoenix. That's oh, for sure. sure. Crush. Yeah. Um, and it got a pretty big laugh. Um, this guy was a heavy drinker. So I have seven shows to do with this fucking guy. And every night, hey, you have a fill your host, Jim Bruce. Doesn't he look like Martin Mull with AIDS? And then he would get drunk and he never watched the feature. Oh, one night, and this was the best show. One night, the feature goes, give it up for your host, Jim Bruce. Doesn't he look like Martin Mulder? So he does the line that the headliner has been doing all week, but the headliner is kind of drunk, and he never watches the feature. So then he gets up, and he goes, hey, what about that uh, Jim Bruce guy? Doesn't he look like Martin Mull with AIDS? And it's as if the audience went, yeah, yeah, that other guy noticed. <laughs> <laughs> and I enjoyed that a lot. He was yeah. also the headliner who was so drunk, he had a callback. If you know what a callback is, you do a little joke at the beginning, and then you have a joke that calls it back, and you get the big laugh. He was so drunk, he one night forgot to do the first part. <laughs> and the callback happens, and everyone's real quiet. And, they, and then he goes... Oh, I was supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That was a fun show. <laughs> oh, uh, alcoholism. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, wh wh what do we do to, to say that we're done? How do we do that? I don't know. I thought it was the trivia question. I think it was. Oh, <laughs> oh I'll, I'll do a trivia question. Okay, you do one. Okay. How, how do we know we're done? Alex's trivia question. That's the trivia question. Pretty Very good. nice. We uh, both won. Yeah, we're both winners. That's <laughs> something you're rarely going to hear about us. <laughs>